So, in today's video, I'll be reviewing the Onos, the Entrati wrist-mounted cannon from the Dante Unbound update in Warframe. Now, this cannon has been modified by Albrecht to turn it into an Incarnon weapon. And if you ask me, Albrecht had a really good idea behind turning a simple wrist-mounted cannon into what is basically a Vortex railgun. Hello everyone, my name is Soldier, and today, the Onos, in my opinion, is one of the coolest Incarnons we've acquired in the past couple of updates, because if you ask me, this railgun vortex weapon is one of the coolest looking ones we've had in general. After all, a vortex railgun sounds like a phenomenal idea and looks amazing when being used. But enough talk about it, let's give ourselves a couple of free shots. Now obviously you see I have a bit more than usual ammo, ignore that, the usual standard ammo is 20. As you see, it shoots rather slowly. So with the Onos, its base stats are quite nice. We have a 26% crit chance. We have 220 base damage, which isn't bad at all, with a high crit multiplier of being 2.40, which is very nice. But sadly, its status is only 22, but you can still build it for status if you want. Now, uh, with it being quite slow, with its attack speed being 1.40, as you saw, its reload is also two seconds long. Granted, my cat just made it instant, but it takes two seconds to reload it. So, when you transform it into an Incarnon, as you'll see here, after you get your thing charged up from hitting headshots, well, it kind of looks like a, a arm straight out of Parasite. Or basically Tokyo Ghoul, maybe? If you want to compare it to that, you can. So, this weapon now has two versions. It has its Vortex and a Charged Attack, meaning the stats are split. Let's go over first the Vortex. So, as you see, the Vortex is quite nice. I'm not going to let it fully charge up, but as you see, it does get smaller and smaller. So, the Vortex vortex is a radiation damage specific weapon, meaning it won't do any other stats unless you apply them. Now, its stats have decreased from the normal weapon. Its crit chance is now 14, its status is now 18, and a crit multiplier now of 1.6. But it gets 5 punch through, meaning if you just uh, hold it out, You'll hit the enemies behind it and beside it until it starts shrinking down to a cone. But the Vortex is not the main focus of the gun. It's what gives you the main focus. It's still powerful, but as you see as I kept holding it, there's a circle filling. That's the charged attack. Now the charged attack, where I use an enemy, bang. That is a pure heat damage shot. It has a 100% status chance if you don't kill the enemy, but its stats are nothing to forget about. Its crit chance when, you, when shot is 38%, its status is 22, same as base, and its crit multiplier has increased to 3.2. But it still has a slow attack speed due to it having to charge up. Its speed is about 0.25, but it will continue to increase with fire rate. Now, despite its slow speed, it has another downside. Its radial attack is AoE. So, as you'll see, that still hits them. The attack has three meters of fall off. As soon as you go beyond three meters, it isn't going to hit the enemy. But, let's see what happens when you do hit the enemy. So if you wanted, you could put Fulmination on. As I said, it has a 100% chance of proccing uh, heat if it does not kill the enemy. And it continues to help as, well, with the Vortex. Oops, that's without any mods on it. The Vortex sucks in enemies, as you see. It doesn't do it that well, but it still does it. And this also has 5 meters of punch through, meaning any enemies behind it are still going to get hit. But that's enough of just the base weapon. As we said, it's an Incarnal weapon, so let's cover the Incarnal upgrades. So let's cover the evolutions of the Onos. So when it comes to Evolution 1, it unlocks the Incarnon as we saw. It's a giant Vortex Railgun. So we'll go on to Evolution 2. This will give us three options. Those being Marksman's Hand, Rapid Wrath, and Swift Deliverance. Now, these are all dealer's choice. They are all very good options, but I also obviously have a preferred option. But we'll go over all of them. First up, we have Marksman Hand, which decreases weapon recoil by 30%, and it applies to both modes. Rapid Wrath gives us plus 25% fire rate, and this also applies to both modes. And then finally, with Swift Deliverance, we will get an increase of 30% to our projectile speed. This obviously also applies to both modes. 
Now, as I said, I have my preferred option being obviously Rapid Wrath, but obviously all of these are fine options. I picked Rapid Wrath because the weapon is just a little bit too slow for me. Next up is Evolution 3. We once again will be given three options, those being Extended Volley, Rapid Reinforcement, and Hunter's Rearment. These options, again, are all dealer choice. Pick what you prefer. They're all very good options. But, obviously, I have my preferred option, but I will go over all of them. There's two of them I really like. Extended Volley gives us a plus 10 to our magazine, and this only applies to the non-incarnon. Next up is Rapid Reinforcement, which increases our reload speed by 30%. This applies to both, including the reload of the main weapon and the Incarnon swap. Finally is Hunter's Rearment, which gives on kill a 10% chance to replenish 10 ammo, but this sadly only applies to the non-Incarnon. So, when it comes to the dealer's choice here and what I prefer, I really like Extended Volley and Rapid Reinforcement, but obviously... The weapon's a little slow on swapping and reload, so I think instead of today of going with Extended Volley, I'll be going with Rapid Reinforcement. Next is Evolution 4, with once again another selection of three. You're seeing a trend. Three, 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 three. All three. But these options are Lethal Lance, Incarnate on Efficiency, and Elemental Excess. Now, on Lethal Lance, you'll get plus 2.5% punch through for 20 seconds on kill, and I believe this can continue to refresh. I never really paid too close attention to it. Next is Incarnate Efficiency, which uh, will give plus 50% more Incarnate Charge on Headshot. And then finally, with Elemental Excess, you'll get plus 20% status chance, but minus 10% crit chance. And this affects both modes of the weapon, Incarnate and Non-Incarnate, non but... This applies after mods as flat numbers. So when it comes to these options, I believe the first and the third options are the best choices. But I prefer the punch through one because I like having some crit in my build and I think decreasing the already low crit chance to 16 instead of 26 is going to be pretty detrimental to the gun. Finally, we have Evolution 5, which once again will give us our final selection of three. Those are... Sequential Skullbuster, Impaler's Ferocity, and Devastation Cascade. Now, all of these can be used and are good, but I prefer one of them, obviously, but let's talk about each one. Sequential Skullbuster will give you plus 30% headshot damage, which will stack up four times on each headshot. But it is bugged, and we are unsure if this is meant to just be applied additively to the other base damage mods you give your weapon, or if it should be applied multiplicatively. And it does apply to the Incarnon and non-Incarnon, but obviously you'll only be getting this bonus from the charge shot, not the Vortex, because I don't think the Vortex can hit a headshot. Next up is Impaler, Impaler's Ferocity, which will give you plus 10% damage on a punch-through hit, and it stacks up 10 times. This is also additive to other base damage mods, but this could be bugged and should be done multiplicatively, but we don't know yet, obviously. Needs more testing done, and obviously needs to be asked, because it appears there's a couple bugs with this weapon. Finally, we have Devastation Cascade. Gives, well, 5% crit damage and crit chance on the Incarnon form when you hit an enemy, and this will stack up to 50. I would say that this is the best option, but... <sighs> It's only additive to the weapon, which is fine. That actually works perfectly fine with this. But I don't really like this option purely because the Incarnon with the charge shot takes a lot of your Incarnon. So you're not going to be in there long since it basically just eats through it really, really quickly. So, like I said, these are all dealer's choice. Pick whichever one you prefer. But I'm going to be going with Impaler's Ferocity, so it mixes well with Lethal Lance. But... Now that we've gone over all the Incarnons, let's go ahead and get into the builds. So, when it comes to the builds, I have two options. I have a early game friendly, because this is not that hard to get, obviously. To get the Onos, you just have to uh, have done the Whispers in the Wall quest and um, the Deadlock Protocol and just do Rotation Bs for the new Disruption or Mantis on Deimos. So obviously, you can get this gun relatively early. It's not that hard to build either. It just needs 3,000 salvage. Um, 
400 Necro Coils, two Argon, and like six Entrati Lanthorns, which obviously the six Entrati Lanthorns is quite obnoxious to get, but obviously they're able to be acquired. It's not that bad. So I have two builds. I, have, I don't have a Riven for this thing. I know some people already have them, but I don't. I'm not that lucky. So when it comes to the early friendly build, You'll see Barrel Diffusion, Sure Shot for Status Chance, Hornet Strike. Yes, I know it's not maxed. I'm broke because every time I max a weapon, it means I have to go Forma, another weapon I like, and I don't feel like doing it. <laughs> I'm also out of Forma, so if someone wants to give me some, thank you. That'd be nice. There's my name. But Lethal Torrent. Lethal Torrent is a phenomenal mod. It gives you fire, it gives you multi-shot, and you need fire rate for this thing. It should slow. Pistol Gambit, Pistol Pestilence, Jolt, and Scorch, because I believe Cascadia Flare is the best option, purely because when you are in your Incarnon, you get heat procs guaranteed, you get radiation. I think it's very, very useful. So, for this being the early uh, early mode build, let's go ahead and try it. I need to take off the Kavat, because the Kavat is giving me buffs. Did it give me crit chance? No. Pickup charm. That's fine. So, I already have the enemy spawned in. This is the newest thing where you can spawn in a bunch of them. So, let's see how it works. I mean, wow. As you see, Lethal Lance is procking. We got our Cascadia Flare procking. To me, this seems quite strong, even without using, obviously, the mods that you need to get kills for. Now let's swap into the Incarnon. As you see, Rapid Reinforcement, making it even faster. And then, Slurp. Obviously, don't be too close. You will get staggered. And it seems to be doing quite well. It has Punch Through, so it's hitting multiple enemies. Seems like it's also bugging out. And overall, it just it does what you needed to do. It sucks in the enemies. It's a high-powered heavy shot. And as you saw, it does eat up a lot of ammo that a charge shot does. So, obviously, it does quite well. What about if it was still path, obviously? Well. Oh, I thought my Kavak gave me another buff. I was about to say. Well, let's reload so we get full thing. Let's see how it works. Obviously, without any, uh, I was about to say rank up mods. On kill effects, it's quite difficult for it to start off, but once you start getting the hang of it, after you reload like I, I am, it does do quite well. Pop the Incarnal when you get it so you get more benefit from Cascadia Flare, and as you see, it still does quite well. Obviously, alloy armor is a bit of a problem, but nothing a headshot can't fix. As you see, our Cascadia Flare obviously is going to stay at max since we have such high status. And it still does quite well. Is it going to kill everything instantly? No, obviously not. It does still have to use the card on, but its base form does quite well and should be able to take you quite far if you're using this thing for Steel Path. But granted, there are a multitude of options. So let's go ahead and get into the next build. So next up, after I just did the roughly early game-ish mod build, because obviously doing arbitrations and stuff like that to get you my shop, barrel diffusion, it's kind of boring. It's kind of lackluster, but we still have a late-ish game build once again. I don't have a Riven. You don't need a Riven. A Riven would be nice, but sadly I don't have one. So we have Barrel Diffusion, sorry, Galvanized Diffusion and Galvanized Shot, which replaced Sure Shot and Barrel Diffusion. But as you see, I also have Prime Pistol Gambit, so Normal Pistol Gambit, to replace some of my mods. Now, you do not need to run the 6060s. You don't. I still recommend two of them, at least. Pistol Pestilence and Jolt, or similar but obviously if i wanted to i could forma again and slap on prime to the charge to give it that extra bit of damage for cascadia flare but it is not required so once again let's do the standard test of non steel path then still path apparently some of these enemies aren't fully spawning them there we go so once again non steel path enemies with the late ish game build i would say does obviously even better i could aim that is one downside of this thing, though, being able to aim. As you see, since we have on-kill effect mods, it ranks, ranks, racks up its ability to do damage even better. Now we have the Incarnon, which, to me, is doing even better than it was before, as you see. So, let's take that off, and let's try it in Steel Path. Why does it keep killing some of the enemies as if they don't exist? Oh, I forgot to spawn them in Steel Path. So, let's do Steel Path Enemies. And once again, I'm having to use a frame that is not benefiting Corrosive or any of that. Also, 
we won't attack, which is nice. Oops. Ah, it's fine. So. Well, damn. It still racks up quite fast, even on... If I could aim. Where's their head? Non. Not non. Uh, on Steel Path Enemies. It still ranks up quite well. Does its job. Gets its effects. But what about the Incarnon? Well... I'm saying it, I'll say it does still quite well. I mean, they just shredded alloy armor. Obviously, if I could hit the headshot, it'd do better, but I can't aim at all. But as you see up here, we're still getting in Pillage Frosty, so we're getting punch through damage. Lethal Lance, which gives us punch through on kill. We're getting Galvanized Shot, Galvanized Diffusion, and Cascadia Flare. So all of the mods are working as intended, so they all are doing their job. So, there is one more thing I would want to show you. There is a bug currently, so if you wish to abuse it, go for it. But there will also be a, another little thing where I show you my favorite frame to use it with, obviously. Mirage is currently bugged with quotation marks. I'm unsure if they fixed it yet. So when you spawn in, I'll do it non still pass so it's easier to show. Since I don't have my Mirage built up. Obviously, her Hall of Mirrors is very, very strong. Why am I bouncing? So, let's get the Incarnon. There you go. So, you proc the Incarnon, you use Hall of Mirrors. Well, actually, in the other order. Hall of Mirrors, then Incarnon. They're all sucking. And they all shoot lasers. I'm not sure if they fixed it or not, but apparently... I don't know how to proc it. They used to, based off what I was told continue to shoot the lasers even after they left in Karnon, but it seems like they fixed it. So, obviously, once again, there was the Mirage Showcase. She's still really, really strong when it comes to being a gunslinger. I understand why people use her. I still won't. But, before I take us on to Steel Path to go fight an Acolyte, I'm going to show you what I like to do with the Onos, obviously, since it's Puncture, and I'm running Corrosive. Now, like I said, before we move on to Steel Path, let's show it off with my boy, Hydroid. So, obviously, Hydroid, as a passive, enemies damaged by Hydroid are more vulnerable to corrosion. Well, this weapon does puncture. Puncture is really good at going through armor. So, why not mix them? Now, obviously, I've made a Nourish build for him. I'm not going to use Nourish in the first fight, but I will show you what happens when you do. So, let's get some energy. Obviously, I want to ma make it match my boys, so the orange. Let's respawn them in Steel Path. Why does it keep breaking? There you go. So, as you'll see, once again, we need to get our card on up. Oof, but this being in Steel Path, they die quite easily. As you see, it still is doing its job. I can't hit a headshot. Pop the card on, it matches him quite well. I'll be damned. For these guys being, uh, supposedly still path, they don't, they don't like this that much. But, hold on, obviously. What if I plundered? What if I nourished on top of that? Well, there, is, there isn't really enough enemies to showcase that. Let's, uh, let's get, let's get some more enemies in real quick. Why does it keep killing them? There you go. So, let's do what I like to call what would be a perfect world, where you clump them up perfectly. Let me get my Incarnon. There you go. Incarnon active. You'd plunder. You'd pop the Incarnon. And, well, you don't need, obviously, Nourish. You could technically use Viral Tempest to apply Viral, but we're going to use Nourish. What happens now? Well, all your stats are applied, and... Other than him being out of the way. Well, it seems like every... And there went his armor. It seems like everything kind of just crumpled. But, obviously, as people continue to say, you're in the simulacrum. This is a controlled area. Yeah, I know. I, I go to Still Path right after this. So, I'm going to show off the build that we'll be bringing into Still Path. And I'll see you guys in the Steel Path. We're going to bring Biscuit. We're going to bring... Why not? Let's showcase a weapon I'm going to be doing a video on soon. Why not? Ooh, you may have saw something as well. And we're still going to bring my hate. Why not? 
my favorite little weapon. We're gonna all gonna match colors. There we go. And now I will see you guys in Steel Path. All right, here we are in Steel Path. Obviously, it's fresh. I haven't killed anybody. So we brought the Onos with my preferred build, Biscuit, Letron, and Hate. So let's go ahead and see how this will perform, obviously, in a non-controlled setting. I can actually aim. I mean, feels like it's doing quite well, actually. There's this enemy. Oh, there they are. Well, let's try it on a Corpus guy. Still works, even though we're using Corrosive. Let's add Viral to the mix. Why not, right? Okay, you're doing quite well. Obviously, this weapon is a primarily puncture, so when adding more status, you are benefiting it more. But since you want Cascadia Flare to really get the proc off from heat, what I would recommend is obviously increasing how much heat would be on the build. Like I said, you could form on Prime Heated Charge. Where'd you come from? And you get the most out of your heat status effects, which is what I recommend doing, so that you can get the biggest benefit. And obviously, even when they're in the tentacle form, you could obviously do this. Oh, we got the Acolyte already. Good, I've been wasting time long enough. But I would like to use this on them. Oh, violence! Nice, so we don't have to lose any of our, uh, any of our things. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Let's see how this works. Oh, you're gonna be like this? Okay. Let's see if I can drag him to follow me. There you go. Holy shit! Uh, yeah, I, I think this can confirm that, uh, that dude had no chance. And that this weapon is very good. But hey, there was Steel Path for you. So, obviously, this weapon is a phenomenal choice if you want to basically do Steel Path entirely. As you saw, it, it, it kills. It does quite well. I'd recommend it, and it's not hard to acquire, like we had covered. You just have to have completed... Deadlock Protocol, and Whispers in the Wall. And to do those, you have to have done the new war. So yes, while you would have options better than this, I think it is a good gimmick weapon to have, because it is literally a Vortex Railgun. I like it. I think it's a phenomenal choice. And I think everyone should give it a try. Even if you don't like it, I'd still say keep it. It's a f basically a free card on that costs no resources. Because, just to make the Onos, like I had said, it was cheap. I think I can show y'all in here. I can. Right there. There we go. Six Entrati Lanthorns, Argon Crystals, some Necrocoils, a little bit of Salvage, and some Credits. That is not bad at all. Quite cheap, even. Mastery 14, not that bad, either. On the other hand, the melee weapon, it's its own story. I'll get to that thing later. But, I hope you guys have a great rest of your time. I hope to see you guys in the next video. If you want to see more of these, make sure you hit that sub button and hit that bell for post notifications. And also, tell me weapons y'all want to see me do builds on. Like I said, I can go and get the weapon. I can go and level it up, stuff like that. It's not going to kill me to spend a little bit more platinum and a little bit of time just to make another build. Because I still have a couple more left. I have Latron. I have Dread. I have... Uh... Have I done Corinth? No, I have not done Corinth. I also have Strun. I have all these. Hell, I still have Lux to do. Lux. Lex to do, not Lux. But yeah. I hope you guys have a great rest of your time. Peace out, my recruits. I'll see you next video.